for some reason, students think that the quadratic formula is, uh, I believe the youngsters call it the bee's knees. Um, it's okay. It is not my first choice. Uh, typically, this is how I proceed. I first look to see, is the square root property something that I can use? If not, I look to see if I can use the zero factor theorem. If it doesn't factor, I will try to complete the square as a method of last resort. I'll use the quadratic formula. If nothing else works nicely, then I'll use the quadratic formula. So in number one, could I use the square root property? Well, I've got a square here, but this guy has the variable and it's not a square, so it doesn't work out well for me. Uh, number two, does it factor? No, there's nothing that you could add to multiply. There's nothing you can multiply to get 13 and add to get 5. Completing the square, well, this is a 1, but this guy here is not even, so that's going to create fractions, and I know we typically don't want to do that. Now, to use this formula, you have to identify the a, b, and c. And that all comes from right here. a is the coefficient of x squared, which is 1. b is the coefficient of x, in this case 5. And c is just the constant, 13. So, using the quadratic formula, you should write that down every time you use that. You know what, if you want to sing it, you can. I'm going to choose not to right now. But every time you use a formula, write it down. Every time. So here, x is equal to negative b, so that's the opposite of this guy. That's negative 5. Plus or minus the square root. b squared, well, b is 5, so b squared is 25. The minus 4ac is something that I actually come over here to this side to work on. That's a negative 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 13. So that's a negative 52. And then this is all over 2a. So a is 1, so 2a is 2. And the rest of the quadratic formula is all about simplifying. That's all you can do. 25 minus 52 is negative 27. And then you want to see if you can simplify or reduce this radical. Now as you look at this, this guy breaks down as 9 times 3. So there is your square. We get negative 5 plus or minus, so the square root of 9 is 3. The negative gives you an i. And then there's a factor of 3 that stays on the inside. This 3 stays on the inside here. And this is all over 2. You would try to see if there's some way to simplify all of these, but there's not. They don't have anything in common. You get two answers, two nasty looking answers, but they are two solutions nonetheless. So let's look at number 2. In order for us to use the quadratic formula, we have to have everything on one side of the equation and it needs to be in descending order. So when I move the 15x over, it's a minus 15x plus 7 is equal to 0. Your a in this case is 2, b is negative 15, watch your signs, and c is 7. We always write the quadratic formula every time we use it. It helps us remember the quadratic formula. And this is all over 2a. So for us, we have negative b, so that's a positive 15 now, plus or minus the square root. b squared, b is negative 15, so b squared is 225. 
And then again, just like I did in the last problem, I'm going to take this negative 4ac and work him on the side. That's negative 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which equals 9. So this is negative 8 times 7 is negative 56. And this is all divided by 2a. So that's 2 times 2, which equals 4. So 15 plus or minus the square root of 225 minus 56 is 169. Now, we can simplify this. And we end up with 15 plus or minus 13 all over 4. Now notice, nothing imaginary, nothing radical, so that means I need to separate and get my two answers. So, when I separate, I get x equals 15 plus 13 over 4. So that's 28 divided by 4, which equals 7. And the other solution, x equals 15 minus 13 divided by 4. So that's 2 divided by 4. And that gives me 1 half. Nice answers like this means that I could have taken this equation and I could have solved it by factoring. So if you take just a few moments, you'll see that it does factor and you'll get these same solutions. Didn't say the quadratic formula was the best method, but it does always work. But sometimes you need to do some manipulating first so that it works out well for you. In this equation right here, I've got fractions. And let me tell you right now, you do not want to plug fractions into the quadratic formula. It's going to be gross. What we can do is that we can clear out the fractions. Find the LCD like we've done before. In this case, it's 8. And multiply everything times 8. When I do that, 8 times 1 over 8 is going to give me just 1, so that's 1x squared. 8 times 1 fourth is 2, so plus 2x. 8 times 5, so that's minus 40, equals 0. Now, if I were working this problem any way that I wanted to, I would definitely go about using uh, completing the square, because this is 1 and that's even. But since the instructions say use the quadratic formula, I guess we might should do that. So a is 1, b is 2, and c is negative 40. The quadratic formula, again, we're going to write that every time we use it. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and this is all over 2a. Well, just time to plug and chug. Negative b is negative 2 plus or minus the square root. b squared, well, b is 2, so b squared is 4. Minus 4ac, so negative 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 40. And all together, that gives me a positive, make sure you watch your signs, a positive 160. And this is all over 2a, 2a being just 2 times 1, so that's 2. Don't reduce this. You can't do that. I do get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 164, and this is all over 2. You can break down the 164, and this is 4 times 41. That's a perfect square, so we end up with negative 2 plus or minus 2 square roots of 41 all over 2. Now notice, everything here has the common factor of 2, so I can reduce that, and I end up with that becomes a negative 1 plus or minus 
1 divided by, or 2 divided by 2 is 1, so 1 square root of 41. And this is all over 1, so since I'm just dividing by 1, I, I don't need to write that. So there are my two answers, negative 1 plus and minus the square root of 41. I've got one last one here, 3x squared minus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. A equals 3, B equals negative 3, and C equals negative 4. Again, please pay attention to your signs. Quadratic formula. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. All right, so negative B. Again, watch your signs. Negative, negative 3 is a positive 3. Plus or minus the square root. B squared, so B is negative 3. That gives me a 9. Minus 4AC, so minus 4 times A is 3. C is negative 4. So 12 times 4 is 48. That's going to give me a positive. 48, all over 2a, so that's all over 6. So we have 3 plus or minus the square root of 57, and that's all divided by 6. Now if you look at the square root of 57, he does factor, but it's just 3 times 19, so nothing good comes from that. So the, uh, this is our solution, 3 plus or minus the square root of 57 all over 6.